Okay, uh, so first of all, thank you very much for having me here today. I'm so excited to be in Scotland. Um, I was actually here two years ago with a, with a scholarship, so I'm pretty excited to be back as a speaker. Um, so as uh, Philip said, um, I'm from Mexico. Uh, I'm currently working remotely for this company called OutZero, so I've been uh, all over the world. It's pretty, pretty exciting. Um, and uh, well, the title of this talk, How to Sort Your Socks Using JavaScript. I guess most of uh, you are thinking like, what is this girl even going to talk about? Like, this is such a weird talk title. So to give you a little bit of context, um, this was the original title of this talk. Computer Science 101, Introduction to Computational Complexity, The Sorting Problem. Are you excited now? <laughs> no? So, um, so yeah, I decided to change the title because it seemed a little bit boring. So I want to ask you a question. How many of you had computer science, has a computer uh, science background? How many of you study algorithm, data structures? All right, that's like almost half of the, of the people here. Um, so the main purpose of this talk is I, would, I wanted to explain some of, com some of the computer science uh, concepts in the context of sorting, in the context of JavaScript, to give you tools to be able to solve your problems on your web apps more easily. So computer, computational complexity, what is that even? So computational complexity is just the study of all the possible algorithms that can solve a problem. So far, so good. But this is a sorting talk. So what is a sorting algorithm? A sorting algorithm is just an algorithm that sorts elements of a list according to a certain order. No biggie, I mean, I imagine you already knew that. So the most commonly orders to sort something is either numerical or lexicographical. So far, nothing very, very weird, right? So this is a JavaScript conference. So of course, let's talk about the sort function in JavaScript. So this is a very easy and normal uh, example. Let's say we have an array with numbers, 33, 2, 98, 25, and 4. And then we call the JavaScript sort function. And of course, JavaScript gives us this amazing answer, 2, 25, 33, 4, and 98. Because of course, in JavaScript world, 25 and 33 uh, are smaller than 4, right? Weird. So what is actually happening? Why is JavaScript uh, giving us this weird answer? Uh, JavaScript is actually doing lexicographical sorting. So if you have ever sorted things in JavaScript in, in a numerical way, you, would, you probably gave a compare function. If this compare function is not provided, elements are sorted by converting the elements in this array into strings. And then these strings are compared according to their unical code point value. So what does this actually look like? Imagine if we have this uh, colors array with uh, red and blue. Uh, JavaScript is just comparing it in lexicographical way, and then uh, blue will come before red because let's say JavaScript is just sorting it in an alphabetical way. What will happen if we do the same thing with a numerical array? In the second example, we have a small array, 80 and 9, and 80 comes before 9 because 80 has a smaller Unicode coin point value. Let's say that 80 is lexicographically smaller than 9. This will be the exact same thing if you call this numerical array as strings. For JavaScript, it makes no sense. Uh, it makes the same, it, it, it's the same because uh, if you don't provide this compare function, JavaScript will, only, will just uh, change these elements into strings and compare them lexicographically. So going back to my previous example, uh, now this actually makes sense because 25 and 33 are indeed lexicographically smaller than 4 and 98. So JavaScript is not as crazy as it seems. It has its own sort of logic. Um, following this uh, train of thought, you can actually try comparing anything like emojis or strings or numbers because for JavaScript, this is all the same. JavaScript will just convert everything into Unicode coin point values, into strings. Emojis have Unicode coin point values as well. So what have we been doing normally as, as developers to actually try sorting something in a numerical way? We provide the compare function that I was talking about. So basically, most of us just provide this function, and we can finally have a sorted array right? in a, in a, <clears throat> in a numerical way. So here is the million dollar question. Have you ever wondered which is the actual algorithm used behind the native sort function in JavaScript? Or is it only me who thinks about these kind of things? Do I need a new hobby? Do I need to do something else? So this is actually something that I thought about. 
And the answer is that the ECMAScript standard doesn't really impose a certain algorithm to be used in the sorting function. This means that every JavaScript engine can actually do whatever implementation they feel like doing. Um, so the good news is that actually all of these engines are open source and we can actually see the source code. And uh, that's actually what I did. I went, I did a little bit of a research and tried checking which uh, algorithm was used behind every JavaScript engine. So this is the source code for uh, Spider Monkey. I'm sorry if uh, it's not easy to read. Um, we're just gonna highlight the important, part, the important parts. So Spider Monkey from Firefox is using an implementation of the merge sort algorithm. And if this doesn't make any sense, I'm gonna be explaining a little bit uh, later what the merge sort algorithm is. So what I really like about reading source code is reading the comments in the source code. Um, and this one says, uh, this, the merge sort algorithm is a, a stable sort. Sequence of equal elements is preserved. The concept of stability in the context of uh, sorting is something that I'm gonna be explaining a little bit, uh, a little bit later. And the second comment says, insertion so apply insertion sort to small chunks to reduce the number of merge passes needed. So basically what this is saying is that the spider monkey uh, is using merge sort for large, array and large arrays and insertion sort for smaller ones because it's better for performance. So V8 from Chrome is using an implementation of quick sort. And just like the, the spider monkey one, they are also using insertion sort for smaller arrays. So what about Nitro? Nitro is using as well merge sort, and Chakra is using quick sort. So basically, if you notice, there is a pattern here. The most used uh, sorting algorithms used in JavaScript engines is merge sort, quick sort, and insertion sort for smaller arrays. So now let's talk a little bit about the actual sorting algorithms. This is the exciting part of the talk, right? It's a little bit more of computer science-y. So stability, I told you I was gonna explain this concept and um, basically this stability means that a, a stable sort is one in which equivalent elements retain the re relative positions after sorting. And I really like this picture because it's easier to explain it visually. So imagine we have these, uh, these cards and uh, we have a seven of spades, a five of hearts, a two of hearts and a five of uh, spades as well. Basically if the five of hearts and the five of spades have the same value but the five of, uh, of hearts came uh, before the five of spades. So if we use a stable algorithm to sort these, uh, these cards, basically the original position of elements that have the same value is preserved. So basically uh, the five of hearts stays uh, before the five of spades and uh, the cards are sorted. In a non-stable algorithm, this, this doesn't really matter. Uh, the actual original order can change. And um, now let's talk about the actual algorithms, insertion sort, merge sort, and quick sort. So insertion, insertion sort. The way insertion sort works is um, the array is iterated uh, element by element, and each element is compared against each other. So basically this is good for smaller arrays because you are actually iterating over all of the array. If this doesn't make much sense, it's way easier to explain it with a little bit of a video. So uh, the way this algorithm works, it starts with six and it starts iterating. It, uh, it's comparing every element against each other. If one element is smaller than the other, it switches places and it just continues iterating. Imagine doing that for, uh, I don't know, a million element array. Of course, this is not performant for very big ones, but for smaller ones, this, uh, this algorithm is really good. Um, so this is the actual JavaScript implementation of this uh, algorithm. I don't expect you to understand everything right now. I'm gonna be uploading the slides later so you can actually see uh, what's going on. But what I really want you to focus from this implementation is that there is nothing weird going on. There is no weird implementations. It's just uh, two for loops and then there is uh, the swapping and that's it. It's not a difficult uh, algorithm to implement in JavaScript. And um, if you actually remove all of the comments and all of the, the new lines that I added here to make it more understandable, this, is, this just takes 10 lines of code. Implementing insertion sort takes 10 lines of code in JavaScript. So let's talk about merge sort now. And merge sort um, implements this concept in computer science that it's called divide and conquer, which means it's easier to solve a problem if you divide it into small pro smaller problems. So how does this actually look in computer science? 
Um, so the way merge sort works is you have a large array, and you will divide it into two subarrays in halves. And then those subarrays, you will divide it into two, and those subarrays into two, into two, into two, until you finally have a one element array. And a one element array is already trivially sorted, right? Because it's only one element. There is nothing to sort there. And the merge part of the algorithm comes when you already have uh, a lot of sub arrays that are sorted, and you will merge them back together to finally have a sorted array. If this doesn't make much sense, let's see a video, because it's way easier to explain it with a video. Oh. So yeah, so you have the, the array, and it, it gets divided into halves. Each uh, sub array is divided into halves, into halves, until you have uh, eight arrays that are already sorted, and then you compare each, uh, each array against each other, and uh, you combine them back together into a sorted, uh, sorted array. And it goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on until you have a one array that it's already sorted. Then again, as I keep saying, uh, if you actually want to understand truly how this works, I, uh, I invite you to, to see the slides later or to check it out online. Um, but this is the actual implementation in JavaScript as well. And, uh, there is nothing weird going on. This one in particular, um, we have a middle variable that it's just cutting the, the array into halves. Then uh, we have a left variable that holds the left part of the, of the array. The right part is just holding the right part of the array. And at the end, we're just calling the merge function, which is uh, recursively uh, using the merge sort function that we have here right now. Um, this is the interesting part, the merge sort uh, function. And as you can see, there is nothing weird. We just have uh, a while loop, we have some conditions, and basically what it's doing, it's uh, the merge function is just comparing the elements of uh, the two arrays, and it's checking which one is smaller than the other. And then the, the smaller one, it's being pushed to a result array, and, and that's what we are uh, returning back at the end, the result array with all of these elements in the correct order. Now again, if we remove all of the uh, all of the comments and everything from the from this implementation, it only takes 23 lines of code, which is not a lot at all. And uh, the last the last algorithm is the quick sort algorithm. And the way it works is you will find a pivot element, which is just a random element from the array. And then what you will do is you will put all of the elements that are smaller to this pivot element to the to the left and all of the elements that are bigger to the right. And uh, how does this look? So let's say in this case, uh, the pivot element is a number three, and then you have pointers. You have pointer in the beginning and in the end of the array. So you basically uh, are checking all of the elements from the beginning and the end, and you're comparing to see if they are in the right position, if they are either sm in the smaller part or in the bigger uh, part of the, of, the, of the pivot element. So basically, you are just swapping. Once you find elements that are not in the right side of the, of the array, you swap, you swap, you swap. And, uh, and now you're left out with, uh, with two halves of the array, and you continuously, recursively, uh, do the same algorithm until you finally have your sorted array. Um, this is the implementation, quick sort. Uh, then again, uh, it's, it's pretty... It's pretty normal, nothing weird going on. You're using recursion again in, in these sides. Um, and then there is the partition function, which is the most important part of this algorithm. So the way the partition function uh, works is there is just uh, one, uh, three while loops, and it's just uh, moving the elements from the beginning to the end, and it's just iterating over the array. And it's just, at the end, at the end of the uh, implementation, you can notice that it's just swapping the elements that are not in the right place. This is really, really difficult to explain in a few minutes. Um, but then again, I, uh, I, I, am, I really invite you to check this uh, more slowly later. But the important part here, again, is that this, is, this only takes 31 lines of code. And this is the most complex uh, implementation of the three algorithms. Um, so basically, what, what it means is that you can actually implement your own sorting algorithms using JavaScript really easily and uh, in a few lines of code. And actually, you can also try extending the array prototype and use these functions or these implemented sorting algorithms as if they were almost native. 
And at this point, you're probably thinking like, why should I even care about implementing my own sorting algorithms when there are already really intelligent people in, I don't know, in Google and other companies that already thought about these kind of things. Why should I care? So I have a few reasons. And the first one is because of design strategies. And uh, I want to ask you a question. How many of you have actually tried debugging your code by commenting chunks of your code? Like you, you comment one part and see if it works or not, and you start commenting, commenting, or did you finally find a bug? How many of you have done that before? Ah, so that's, that's divide and conquer. That's an actual computer science term. And you have unconsciously, or consciously, I don't know, use it. This is, this, um, this is a tweet from Dan Abramov saying the exact same thing, that he was debugging some CSS code by just commenting how, uh, parts, parts of the code until he finally found where the bug was. This is the exact same concept behind Git by sec. Um, the second reason you might care about implementing these algorithms by yourself is due to stability. So this is uh, MD, the MDN docs, and it says, um, the native sort function is not necessarily stable. And uh, this is way easier to explain with a small example. Imagine the organizers of Scotland, uh, JS, made a, a list with all of the speakers, right? Um, and this list is sorted alphabetically by, by last name. Uh, imagine that the organizers, they also want to sort this list by age. Of course, the age are fictional, right? These are, these are not real ages of the, the speakers. Um, so normally what we will do using JavaScript, we will do a compare function, as I told you before, to try uh, sorting this, uh, the speaker list by age. So what will happen if we run this code in V8, in a V8 that uses quicksort, which is not a stable algorithm? So basically for the speakers that have uh, the same age, the same value, um, the original alphabetical order that we had is no longer preserved. You will notice that now we have, I don't know, Irina Preda in the first place. We have Umar Hansen in the second one, Galuk Said. So basically you realize that the alphabetical order is just completely lost. What if we do the exact same thing using Nitro? Nitro uses merge sort, which is a stable algorithm. So basically, in this case, uh, the alphabetical order is preserved. So if you care about having consistency between your data, perhaps maybe it's an interesting idea to implement your own sorting uh, algorithms using JavaScript. And uh, I think the last reason is the, uh, the most important reason why perhaps you will care about this. Um, it's because, believe it or not, implementing your own sorting algorithms using JavaScript can be faster than using, than using the native one. And I'm gonna show you why. So if you were really, really paying attention to me and you were not a little bit sleepy, maybe you realize that the JavaScript engines for V8 and Nitro are written in JavaScript. So how come? how come the JavaScript engine is written in JavaScript itself? Is this some sort of JavaScript inception? Eh, kinda, kinda, uh, but this is actually called self-hosting in computer science, which is implementing parts of a language in that very language itself. But um, shouldn't this be slow? Um, I'll, I'll tell you something. So arrays in JavaScript have methods like for each, map, reduce, and of course the sort function, which is the topic of today. Um, all of these arrays have uh, callbacks as an argument. So basically what we do is we iterate over all of the elements and this callback is called for every single element. Now the execution has to switch between compiled C++ and interpreted JavaScript and this context switch is expensive. So if we stay in the same uh, context, this can boost performance. And if you don't believe me, try comparing the performance of a for each and a simple for loop. So, in summary, basically, uh, let's say that Spider Monkey and, uh, and Chakra are not self-hosted, and V8 and Nitro are. And if this, is not, is, if this is not enough, let's do some benchmarking. So what I did here is I compared the uh, implementations of the sorting algorithms I did in JavaScript with the native one, and in, in uh, arrays that had randomly generated numbers. So for a 10 element array, the insertion sort function that I just show you is faster than the native one. 
So that for 100 elements, insertion sort is still faster than the native one. For a, uh, for a thousand elements, insertion sort is still faster. Now, for a hundred thousand elements, insertion sort is no longer the fastest, as I told you, due to the implementation of this algorithm. For larger arrays, insertion sort is not very convenient. But then again, quick sort started, uh, quick sort changed positions and it's faster than the native one. What happens with a million elements? So, with a million elements, my computer crashed. <laughs> so, I had to stop uh, <laughs> testing insertion sort. So for a million elements, uh, insert, quicksort was still faster than the native one. And if you're getting the idea of all of these examples, for uh, 10 million elements, quicksort was still faster than uh, the native JavaScript sort function. So now you're all sorting algorithm experts. Um, I hope that, um, that you learned something today and basically, I guess the conclusion of this talk is not that, that you should just go and implement everything. As I told you before, you have to know how to choose your battles. If it makes sense to have consistent data and you w actually want to try boosting a little bit the performance of, of your applications, maybe consider um, implementing your own uh, algorithms. Because as you realize, it, it isn't that complicated, it takes a few lines of code and maybe it makes sense. So I guess. What I really want to tell you is that just choose your battles. If it makes sense, do it. If it doesn't make sense, just continue doing what you have been doing before. And uh, sort your socks using JavaScript. And if you are more of a, if you like reading, there is actually an article that I wrote for uh, this site, a list apart. You can uh, check it out online. And uh, there are a lot of the examples. I, there are the code snippets as well in my GitHub account. All of this information is in this article. And uh, I hope you really enjoyed this talk. And that's all for me today, so thank you. Thank you.